Welcome, welcome, welcome to another live edition of the Extra Point Show. Your boy, Mr. P.L. Colt, is in the house. And as you can see, we got the whole gang in the building. We got my man, Michigan Mike, Tasha T. Sizzle, and Boomer Sooner himself, Mr. Brandon Lewis, in the house. How's it going today, gang? Going great. It's going. Good. All right, all right, all right. Um, now, y'all, this week has been one hellacious and messy and a spontaneous week in sports. We're going to get to as much of it as we can over the next hour. But before we do, Ms. Tasha T. Sizzle, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, that, that's you, Tasha. And okay, we are this sponsored show is by May Jane's Coffee. That's M A E J A N E S Coffee.com. You can get your Colombian, your Honduran, and your Brazilian blend coffee, fresh, freshly ground or not, by my sweet daughter, Denise. Denise, I don't know if she's still running her deals now because it's close to the shipping date for you to receive those items. But again, if you don't drink coffee, she does have mugs, she has t shirts. You can get your Royal Engagement t shirts. And everything from MayJanesCoffee.com. Shouts out to our sponsor, MayJanesCoffee.com. Right, uh, Mama over there. Right? Lord, Lord be with us today. <laughs> now, um, Monday, it was just a casual Monday. We're sitting and, and we're minding our, our own business. I'm sitting there talking to Michigan Mike, and I was like, Mike, I just read that there's – 37 players to test positive for COVID in one day in the NFL. So we just kind of had a little quick chat about it, really for fantasy football reasons. Sidebar, congratulations to everyone who made their fantasy playoffs. Congratulations to you. Um, but we didn't think that this would be the A block for this week's show because we had no clue that the NFL would do an about face on something that they said earlier in the offseason. So because of, um, of rampant COVID running through the league right now, the NFL has decided to start moving games again like last year. Today's game between Cleveland and the Las Vegas Raiders have been moved to Monday. And two games on Sunday, Seattle versus the Rams and the Washington football team versus Philly have been moved to Tuesday. Mike, what happened? I thought the league said that they were going to make teams forfeit if they had a COVID outbreak and couldn't field the team. What are your thoughts on that? It seems like uh, COVID called their bluff, and they're like, oh, really? <laughs> they knew that they were going to lose some money, so they were like, let's change this a little bit to benefit us. Really? So you think this is all about money? Tasha, why do you think the NFL changed lanes and, and decided to cancel games this late in the season, well, move games, instead of having a team forfeit like they said in the offseason? Well, I pulled this up. Please, Wi-Fi, just stay. Just, can you stay with me just for a, a little while? Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi won't please. You just stay. Stay. Uh-huh. For a little while. Oh, sorry. It says the <laughs> NFL the NS, NFL policy agreed in July that states that a forfeiture would happen only if all the following instances occur. A game is postponed by requirements of government authorities or to the discretion of the commissioner. Two, the league can't find a suitable makeup date within the framework of the season. And three, the original postponement was caused by an outbreak among unvaccinated players of one team. So are they saying the ones who have the outbreaks are unvaccinated? Um, I can understand maybe not having the time frame because it is close to the end of the season to have, you know, to make up those games. And it does say at the discretion of the commissioner. So is he just saying, hey, let's just go for it? I mean, Brandon, let I don't me come know. to you. Brandon, do you think that the games would be moved if this was wild card weekend instead of just, you know, week 16, week, week 15? Uh, no, I don't think so. Because, I mean, you kind of got to think they have like a certain threshold they have to work in between because you have other major sports that are starting to come into play. And so I don't think it will be, um, I mean, I don't think they would do that. Because I mean, just like you, you're you're messing with other sports schedules and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And then we're gonna kind of go back to like NBA basketball where they did a quick turnaround, right? You know. Speaking of quick turnaround, I'm glad you brought that up, Mike. If you're the Raiders, you have to now delay your flight from Las Vegas all the way uh, on the other side to the East Coast, play on a Tuesday, 
fly back to Vegas, and then play again on Sunday. Isn't this a competitive disadvantage for for the uh, for the opposing team? Yeah, I, I, I don't think I don't think it's fair at all. I think they should have forfeited, uh, got that win, had some rest time. I mean, who doesn't want some rest time, especially towards the end of the season, especially when you're somewhat of a contender. Um, but yeah, I would have definitely liked that rest. And that's what Mark Davis says gripe was. He says, because of this, he says they should have to be forced to fly to Vegas to play. And I think um, Pete Carroll said the same thing. By them having to move their game on a Tuesday, that only gives them a five-day rest period. And you already have a quarterback who's coming back early to me from a thumb injury and other players that need that time, especially at the end of the season, to recoup. Right. Brandon, should these games have been forfeited or are you okay with the moves? I mean, forfeit, because that goes back to the schedule. Like I said, they have a certain threshold, and now you're messing with other sports. You know, um, it is a governing body. It's politics. It all leads down to that and boils down to that. So I think they should have just set the forfeit, um, chalk it up as a loss or whatever, um, agreed upon each counterpart, and just move forward with it. All right. A real quick game of impromptu fact or fiction. I'm going to go to all three of you. Fact or fiction. These games being moved will cost either Philadelphia, the, the Vegas, or um, Seattle a playoff spot. Mike, fact or fiction? I think it's fact, uh, but I kind of am hoping for that the Eagles lose. <laughs> so well, we'll talk about that later. A high draft pick. <laughs> fact or fiction? Do you think this will cost the Raiders a chance at the playoffs? They're like yeah, right think- there, a game behind seventh spot. Yeah, I think it's a bat. I think it will. Because, um, I mean, like I say, it's – you're having to it's, – it's so much you take into, like, the whole operations and everything. You know, you have a certain director of operations that have to, like, get these flights, you know, straighten out, you know, and beginning of the season. Now they're having to do more work on the side to try to make this work, you know, for the game to happen on Monday. Tasha, can, do you envision a scenario to where these extra days can allow for a Raiders player like a Derek Carr or Josh Jacobs to now test positive when he would have played today? If they're doing the daily testing like they said they are, it, it could. But I don't think it – I think it's fiction. I don't think it should affect them because you have players that are coming back from having COVID. And remember, I told you when I had COVID, I was asymptomatic. But for three days, I was down. And even after the 14-day period, I was winded, not even walking 100 meters because it it does something to you. I don't care what anybody says. Having COVID does does something to you. And they're not going to be up to full strength. They haven't practiced. Their their lung capacity may be uh, compromised for whatever reason. So, I mean, the Raiders, if they just go on there and just say, hey, you know, F it, it is what it is. Let's just go play our brand of ball. They shouldn't have any problem beating a team that is down 24 players. If I'm Denver, I'm mad because y'all made me play with a with a uh, uh, a guy off the street at quarterback last year. Mm-hmm. If I'm San Francisco in a meaningful uh, division game, y'all made me play on a Thursday night when we had like 15 players out with COVID. This is uh, like – it seems like it's a little biased towards Cleveland because Baker Mayfield was kicking up a lot of dust about right. being down their quarterbacks. But if all three of your quarterbacks tell you ACL, you're not going to get to switch the game. So Exactly. I'm with Brandon on this and, and Mike as well. I think this is foolishness, and I do think that, that greed is a part of this as well. They want to show to those sponsors that with that new TV deal coming up that by hook or by crook, they won't miss any games. So we'll see how that works out for them. But for you three, I need y'all to sit up in your seats real quick. All three of you. You, Mike, put your Michigan uh, Santa hat on. Yeah, I see you scooting up there. Just scoot up there. Show that logo, Brandon. We see yeah, you showing exactly. your Nike. <laughs> Tasha, you got you repping Nike today, too. We see you. Show your Nike. All three of you. Right here, right now on live TV for everybody to listen to on Spotify, Anchor, or wherever you find that on your streaming platforms, YouTube, whatever. I want an apology from all three of you right here, right now, for the blasphemous, disrespectful comments you made about one Jerry Jones last week. Who wants to start? Mike, we're going to start with you, Brandon. Tasha, who wants to step up first and come on up to the altar and apologize to Jerry Jones? If you think I'm going to apologize to you for any Jerry slander, you're obviously sniffing that Botox that he's injecting into his face. No, that's Brotox that we get down here in the South. 
<laughs> I already got the, 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 the full lips. So I can't do too much more. But look, last week, I asked you all an innocent question, a simple question. I said, are the Cowboys a Super Bowl contender? One of you fell off the screen laughing. One of you was shaking your head. Brandon was looking at me like he was ashamed of me for even asking such blasphemy. And y'all all blame Jerry Jones. But you know what? Right after that, Dallas went into into Washington and beat them down. Washington. I told and they didn't beat them down. Come on. Oh, that was a beat down. Last time I said they were like up ahead, like I had a large lead, and then next thing you know, it was 27-20. That's not the point. The point I'm trying to <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is I told y'all that Dallas got some dogs on defense, and that's why this team is a Super Bowl contender. He just drafted literally. The man just drafted the second coming of Lawrence Taylor. Did you hear what I'm saying? Michael Parsons, did you see the game he had? Did you see the strip sack for the touchdown? Did you see Randy Gregory, Demarcus Lawrence out there? Jerry Jones put this team together. We're talking about C.D. Lamb he took. The man drafted him from his yacht. We're going to put some respect on Jerry Jones' name today. Dak in the fourth round. Mm -hmm. He's the starting quarterback. Ezekiel Elliott led the league in rushing his first two years. That offensive line, he did it twice. Remember the great wall of Dallas back in the 90s? Well, he's done it again in the in the 2020s with another great offensive line. He's got talent upon talent upon talent. And the years passed, you couldn't trust that defense, but you can trust the defense now. To that, Brandon, you say what? You changing your mind now? You ready to apologize to the Cowboys and the Jerry? I will never change my mind, and I will never apologize <laughs> for that. I will not because, I mean, Jerry Jones is a cancer for the team. He just needs to stay as the owner and as the businessman. Um, you can have all those dolls. You can draft all those dolls. But as long as you have Jerry Jones as your owner, you're not going to go anywhere. I have talked to a lot of Cowboy fans. I said, let's be real. Come on now. Let's be real. And they're honest because I'm, I'm asking. I'm like, you really think you guys are going somewhere? And they're like, mm, you know, Dak is not looking too good. You know, Ezekiel Elliott, they need to go on and start Pollard. You know, I mean, yeah, you have Trevin Ditz and um, Trayvon Ditz and Michael Parsons, but mm -hmm. come on now. You got to build on to that. And number one, let me correct you again. Jerry Jones did not draft them. Jerry had Jones team. drafted him on his yacht. Yeah. Did you see him? He was on his yacht with his lady in the star blue. And he said, I'll take C.D. Lamb. And C.D. told his lady, girl, quit going through my phone. Remember, he snatched the phone from his old lady. Remember that? Yes. <laughs> this, this is Jerry on the phone. Mike, <laughs> put that cup down right now and apologize. Well, I will stand by what I what I said. Uh, they are going to the playoffs. I said they're going to win the division easy. Like, look at the rest no, of the division. No, we said Super Bowl. I don't care about no division. They are not going to no Super Bowl. I stand by, by what I said. They are going to lose to the Rams, like I said. They, the Rams got their own problems. They're you know, not the a Super Bowl team. team. COVID. They're going to implode like they always do. Just that's wait a for very the that's a very hurtful word, Mike. That's implode. hurtful. <laughs> Don't use the word implode. That From means within. it was something that they did and not the other team. <laughs> Tasha, now I know you went over there to work on your apology. You you ready? She's speechless. See, look at us. Look at over there meditating. She praying for the strength. <laughs> to get it yeah. done. Look, all I'm gonna say, all I'm gonna say is this: the disrespect is gonna stop right now. The Dallas Cowboys with that defense, those dogs on defense, are gonna get it done. Tasha, I know you went to the bathroom to pray about it. Come on out here and apologize. Well, you Don't know this Wi Fi is terrible here. No, I ain't never scared. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm bone crushing when it comes to this. Jerry Jones is the biggest detractor and reason why Dallas will never do anything. So it's always, it's all, it's not disrespectful because I mean, that man has made billions of dollars for a reason. He's no idiot, but he doesn't need to be in charge of. Of a team. I mean, he just needs to sit back roster? like this. Did you hear the roster break, break down? Are they not one of the yeah, most talented teams roster-wise in the but, league? But that doesn't have anything to do with him. The last time they won a Super Bowl, who, who picked the team? Who picked Jimmy the team? Jimmy Johnson. Okay. Jimmy Johnson. And like Mike always says, th this this is this is the Cowboys. They're, they're a roller coaster. But, you know, in order to win, you need to, towards the end of the season is when you need to be going up. Not at the beginning, like this, and then down. It's going to be hard for them to come back up that hill. Like Mike always says, 
The Cowboys are going to Cowboy. This is their season to start doing what they do worst. Um, that was very hurtful to you, by the way. I got Jerry Jones watching this from his yacht right now, and you mean to tell me ain't none of y'all gonna show that man the respect to apologize no. for the blasphemy because this no. team is just as talented as Tampa Bay. They just as talented they as the are, Rams. Yes, they are talented, but why are they not winning? If they they do, they have the talent, and I think MVP. Uh, d- defensive rookie of the year, Michael Parsons. Yes, yes. He is Low a LT. standout. He is Low a LT. standout. Stand. You know, my boy Trayvon Diggs. They are standouts on that defense, yes. but the team is not meshing. They are doing what Mike says. They're they're cowboy and like Be Brandon. Specific, Mike. No, and, what are and, like, and like Brandon said, it's Jerry Jones's fault. No, you know what? I'm gonna come to them too in just a second, Mike. What what are they cowboying? What are they doing wrong? What, what you tell me so, that nobody so else the, is doing wrong? The definition of cowboying is when you have all the pieces that you need to be a Super Bowl team. So they are very talented, not denying that, but they somehow implode, almost like the Browns have done the past three years. Like they have all the talent there, but it's just like playoffs come and they just go boom. It's it, it's ridiculous, and that's why everyone's saying it's been Jerry Jones because as soon as it's the the Jimmy Johnson curse, ever since he got rid of them, they've had he really won good a teams. Super Bowl after Jimmy Johnson left, and he they had a better they would have called that pass interference on Dion in '94. They had a better O line when Romo was quarterback than they do right now, and look what happened to them. Romo was a disaster. He is no deck now. Romo I, was I, made I, of glass. Romo. Was I know made y'all want to come with your deck slander right now too. But I just happened to catch Jerry Jones on 105.3 The Fan, the home station of the Dallas Cowboys, his weekly radio show. Then let me drop a nugget down there for all of y'all Dak detractors out there. Has Dak thrown more interceptions than touchdowns in the last four weeks? Yes. Is he still suffering from a calf injury that he came back too soon from? Yes. But according to one Mr. Jerry, Jarrell Jones, wasn't that Superman's daddy named Jarrell? Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Jarrell Jones, the Superman daddy himself, he said, don't y'all worry about the offense. We just holding back plays for the playoffs. That's all we doing. He said, what you laughing about? Ain't nothing funny. Brandon, you about that? No, if I'm not mistaken, I don't remember why I heard this, but I, I heard he was putting blame on the receivers. Now, and I'm like, how? That was two weeks ago. That was two weeks ago. <laughs> But didn't nobody tell you to look that up? But still, come on now. How's it the receivers? You're supposed to have, supposed to have my, my boy CD Lamb out there. How's it how's it his fault? That man is playing lights out. He's making he catches. He's defending his quarterback. He's hey, defending hey, his quarterback. You know, and and, and shame on you for digging plan. through the crates and finding that. He needs need to find a new business plan. If, if, if it's his receivers, then he needs to go back to the drawing board. Mm-hmm. We got the best receivers in the league, Mike. Do, do you buy that, that, that the Cowboys are holding back their offense to save the plays for the playoffs? You buying that? No, that's a joke. What that tells me is that we're really trying to get stuff together and it's not clicking yet. Hopefully it, it clicks in the playoffs. That's what I hear. Yeah, I agree. That sounds like an excuse to me because, I mean, my thing is you got Pollard. You're holding back his um, his potential. He could be doing – he could be starting for another team. He could be starting for the yeah. Titans right now, Lord Jesus. Yeah. But he's sticking with Ezekiel Elliott. You know, if it was I agree me, with you on that. I agree with you on that. I, I agree with you on that. Like, as a logical football fan, I can't just come on here and disagree with you about that because that would be inaccurate. Like, I agree with you that Ezekiel Elliott, they done paid him this money and they're going to make him run out this contract. And I think he's gone next year. Pollard is a better option. Pollard is more explosive. He's better in the pass game. You can run him. He don't do this which is tapping on the head after a 10-yard run to come out of the game. He's young, and, and, and he's quick, and he's got a, a a good wiggle, and he can run inside and outside. I give y'all that. All I'm saying is is that for y'all to, to – one of you said last week, oh, I didn't even have him uh, in the Super Bowl in the first place. I think that was you, Brandon. <laughs> yeah, I never do because they always say we're going to the Super Bowl. Okay, y'all been saying that for years. Like I say, <laughs> you know, I've been here hold for 25 up, hold years. Up, hold up. We them boys, hold up. <laughs> hold up. We making noise this year. Y'all going to go with me to the parade? Yes or no? No. Mike, come there won't be no parade. parade. What you mean? We going to the parade? Right. No what parade? parade? <laughs> <laughs> you, 
You talking about flying out to another city to the parade, right? You're not talking about Arlington or Dallas, right? We gonna be in downtown Dallas throwing that fanny up. Y'all gonna see, and I want you. And the thing is, I'm gonna I'm gonna fly you in to watch the Super Bowl when the Titans and the Cowboys play. We'll talk about that another time. I like Titans. to see that, man. No, oh, no, the, the disrespect, Jerry Jones, Jarrell, Superman's daddy. I apologize. I thought I could convince these goons to give you your proper respect. I know you're watching. But, the, but these three, they can't be turned. I think they still mad from the 90s when Emmett had them big, bulky, ugly red uh, Reebok shoes. Uh, he can't. They ain't never he, let us live that down. The problem yeah. is Jerry Jones because he always wants a hand in the cookie jar of picking the coaches, mm -hmm. and he's never had a successful coach. Like, look at all the coaches there. Even uh, Bill Parcells, he didn't even, like, why are you trying to coach a Bill Parcells in the first place? Right. I would not even do that. But Dak he doesn't the like coaching them. And see what happens. Let's see what happens. And he told happened. Dak, hold, hold off on these plays. We're going to run preseason plays because we can win this division with preseason plays. And you watch them flea flickers, the them, them hand, the eye tricks in the, in the wild card round. Y'all going to see. I can't believe this disrespect is going on right now. Speaking of disrespect. But what if it's all but what if it's all but what if it's all a scam? What if they're actually playing hurt just so towards the end they can just say, aha, we told you. No. This is what's this is what's happening. And I'm gonna just calm it on down and, and bring this to a nice little little simmer. This is what's happening. The Cowboys done got some dogs on defense. Arr, 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 arr. They got some dogs. Diggs just got mossed, didn't he, on the last game? He got mossed. Everybody gets mossed once in their life. <laughs> Dion got mossed a couple of times. But but Dallas got some dogs now. And them dogs bite and bar. They can take over a game. They were up for and, and Brandon up there giving out the scores. Give out the score when we was up 24 to nothing, and everybody turned it on to another channel. So Jerry had to make a phone call downstairs and says, I got the Fox president on the line. They said, we got to let this team back in now. Are they going to switch us over to Atlanta versus Carolina? So Dak said, all right, boys, we're going to have to throw a couple to the other side to keep the ratings going. The people in D.C. are turning off the TV. Don't y'all understand the entertainment value of the Dallas Cowboys? Hmm. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, from I mean, they got Hall, real dogs on defense, but they got that dog from Martin. That ain't no damn puppy, Gina. <laughs> we go digress. Now, moving on to a, a, a the real dysfunctional imploding situation since y'all want to talk about the Cowboys. Let me show y'all what a dysfunctional situation is. Let's go to Jacksonville, Florida, shall we? And on behalf of all Tennessee Titans fans, we mourn the loss. We cry real tears at the sight of one Urban the Liar Meyer being shipped off the beach down in, in Jacksonville because we thought we had about three years of sweeps as a Titans fan over that godforsaken franchise, <laughs> Urban Meyer running the team. The Tennessee Titans, that was a sweep every year. So now Jacksonville is looking for a new coach. Tasha T. Sizzle, now you said this a couple of months ago, that you wasn't sold on this, and he probably wouldn't make it throughout the season. Um, well, why did you say that? What happened? I just don't believe in him. Not, and I'm not going to take anything away from him because we all know he has won. He is proven on the college level. But sometimes that college success doesn't always translate to the NFL. And remember, I said this on a previous show. Look at Nick Saban in Miami. He didn't yeah. win, but they actually liked Nick Saban. So he, right. Nick Saban probably could have stayed, but the college game was more geared towards him. You have college coaches who have so much power and they can control the scenario around them when you get in the NFL you cannot control everything that is around you like he kicked the kicker do you kick first of all if even if you're coaching my son in college if my son tells me that you put your feet on him mama's gonna be at that come in, let me holler at you the practice is gonna like, in right there. Number one, that is disrespectful. You don't take your nasty ass feet and put them on somebody. It's, that's just period. College coaches who are as successful as Urban Liar do not need to be in the NFL because they don't know how to tone it down to coach who they're coaching. Like bringing, talking about bringing Tebow in because you wanted to help 
the morality or whatever in the locker room, they don't respect Tim Tebow on the NFL level. They barely no. respect him. You know, as a college, when I mean, even though he's won the Heisman, they he was a joke when he got to the NFL. So why would you feel the need to bring some? That, that's bad coaching. That's a bad decision all the way around. And some other things, like when he hired the, the guy from Iowa who made all the, the racist remarks. Oh, yeah, like that. Doyle. Why would you feel the need to, to, to bring – I mean, I had a whole list of crap on here, and I don't even know what I did with it, of stuff that, you know, he said or he did while he was there. I want to get to, mean, to this part, said, Tasha, about him calling his own staff losers. Now, according to reports, he brought his whole staff in and, and basically went around the table and told them to prove – on their resume, why they wasn't a loser, and and the and kind of singled them out one by one. Did he hire them, Mike? Um, Mike, let me yeah. come in real quick. I, I, I'm not even sold that he's a good college coach. All right, let's let's look back. Okay, um, who was the the main person that set up the Florida team that he had? I would even say Steve Spurrier probably brought in most of those people. Just the brand itself, he built like a really successful team over there, or dynasty team over there. And then, oh yeah, yeah, Urban Meyer comes in. There was, I think, there was like one coach that coached one game, and then it was Urban Meyer. And then he had those championships. Mm -hmm. All right, now go to Ohio. That was Trussell's team. Like he built that after uh, he made Lloyd Carr leave. (laughs) So like that was all him. Mm -hmm. And then Urban Meyer is like, I'll take over. He goes to places that I are forgot already about Jim Trussell. That started the slide for us going downhill against right. Ohio as well. Yeah. And so if you think if anybody thought that he was going to go to a bad team, I mean Jacksonville has always been bad, and try to turn that around like in less than a year at that, like no way that was going right. to happen. Brandon. With a rookie quarterback, that you know he's not. Urban Meyer is not a quarterback person. So why would you bring a fresh rookie? I mean, wet behind the ears in with a coach like that. You need an established type coach. I just don't think that that was a good hire to begin with. And why are there always why are there always problems following him too? like anywhere he goes? We all got that cousin. We all got that cousin. Now, now we all got that cousin or uncle or auntie that every time we talk to them, it was always a a close call or something that was that was about to happen to them. But they was washed by the blood. I'm going to come to you real quick, Brandon. You saw, we talk about Trevor Lawrence, number one overall pick. He's supposed to be a generational talent, the best college prospect since Andrew Luck. All of this, yada, yada, yada. In the last couple of weeks, <clears throat> he's been more vocal, Trevor Lawrence, about the dysfunction going on in Jacksonville. Do you think he ultimately got the plug pulled on on um, old liar? Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, the thing about it is, um, like Tasha said, that wasn't a good hire in the first place because, I mean – they thought, I guess, because him coming from college football to NFL and Trevor Lawrence coming from college to NFL was going to work, but that didn't mesh. You know, um, he's not one of those quarterback gurus who had experience, previous experience in um, the NFL. This was his first fresh off start. And he just basically, we're going to go back to implode. He imploded the team. You know, the team was already a disaster, but he made it worse, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know if you I guys loved saw. It. I loved it. Okay, keep going. I don't, I don't know. If y'all saw what his um, daughter posted on Instagram, but yes. a friend just sent me. There is nothing yes. to defend. It's all lies. And the only way to defeat lies is with love. Love wins every time. And this is Gigi Meyer Pruitt. Um, and so she's been backing up her daddy. And a lot of people have been coming back saying, what family? I mean, you guys are already dysfunctional. It's a lot of stuff that are coming out. When he was in Columbus, got the lap dance, you know, when they played against Cleveland. Just mm-hmm. different stuff like that is coming to surface, you know. Um, what did you say the daughter's name was again, Brandon? It's Gigi Meyer Pruitt. Miss Gigi yeah. Meyer Pruitt, the next time you see your daddy spell his fingertips. I mean, it's like, <laughs> like, <laughs> and that's another thing with me. You did not fly back with your team after a loss. So you can he say. He doesn't associate himself with losing, Tasha. He's like, so y'all you lost, say, y'all fly back. I'm going to stay here. No, he wanted to be on that Chitlin Circuit League. With that girl, don't do that. I love bowling. Don't do that. <laughs> with that, with that girl. But I mean, it's it. Sometimes I also wonder, like you know, when you have owners like Jerry Jones and what's Khan? What's his first name? Shahid Khan or whatever. Uh, Chet Khan. Yeah. 
Now, obviously, again, these are successful men because even to own a team in the NFL, you have to be, I think, a billionaire or something of that magnitude, which or means these men it. are right, which means these men are successful at something. Who is in his ear telling him in the first place that Urban Meyer was a good hire? I think he was going like, for the do they not, are, are, are the, the people around the, them the so scared time. to tell them the truth? Yeah. Have y'all seen um, some of the notes that they have? But on that's NFL? not the that's well. Home? I guess with the with the Florida mm -hmm. connection. But remember, he was so his his chest was so tight at Florida. He was burned out at Florida, and then two weeks later, he he went to the to the FIs. I don't know. That's I don't know. I don't know. Okay, because like prime example, um, Marvin Jones. You know, Marvin Jones is one of the better known, yeah. uh, well respected receiver, and he, you know got mad because of the comments Myers has made and he left, but they, you know, they persuaded him to come back. You know, we need your energy, you know, that veteran presence. And that's the thing. He was bringing all these veteran players that, you know, are well-respected around the league and everything. But I mean, you got also got to keep them happy. They already made their, you know, their notoriety in the NFL, you know, by being respected. Then you come in here and bring, he's basically like a cancer to them, you know, what does that do bringing in those well-established players and well-respected players when all you're doing is just causing havoc with them? You know? You can't talk to a grown man the way you could talk to an 18-year-old. It's, no. it, it's, it's just again, totally different. You, 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 it's, it's a respect thing, period. I don't care if they are in, coach, in college or in the pros. You don't talk to people like that or do some of those things, period. I don't right. care what level it is. Now, you do have a little bit more of a control when it is a college level because they kind of look up to you and they depend on you. Okay, well, I got to do what coach says so I can get the playing time so I can get to where I want to be. But when right. they're already at the apex or at the top of where, you know, where they want it to be, you have to treat them differently. Not saying, oh, I have to give them more respect, but you still have to treat them differently. You can't be, like I said, you can't be in that talk. And like with the coaches, you can't talk to the coaches like that. You can't, it was just disrespectful all the way around everything that he did from the day he got to Jacksonville. Yes, I agree. Can I read something to y'all again too? Go ahead. Run okay, it. so after opening the preseason with consecutive losses, for instance, sources say Meyer informed assistants that he was sick of being embarrassed and if the team didn't start winning immediately, some of them wouldn't be around for a second year. So it sounds like he was the problem because he won't be back for a second year. Right. And, and it's funny that you said embarrassed because all of the embarrassing things that went on with that franchise really didn't take place on the field. It took no. place with him and his antics off the field. No, mm -hmm. Mike, I'm putting you in charge of Fox Sports. You're the president of Fox Sports. Do you reach out to, to Urban Meyer and let him get his old job back on TV as a TV analyst? Oh, Oh no, no, I'm good. I think everyone's seeing a pattern here. Finally, uh, that destruction follows him, and so they're like, mm, "I think we're gonna be good on this." So no, I mean, I could see them being messy with that move, um, but other than well, that, you know, I Fox not. they hired Michael Vick, and Michael hey, Vick did a good job at Kroger. Hey, and CBS retained Dan Marino after he had that. A, that scandal when he had that that outside baby and they CBS Sports kept they kept him. See, only T Sizzle will bring up a, a, a side baby. Like, I, who knew that Dan Marino had a, is the baby athletic? Like, he did. He, did. He, he was having an a, he was having an affair, and it became kind of public knowledge. But then remember, they want to get rid of old Shannon Sharp, old Unc, you know. But they and who yeah. picked him up? Fox. Do not be surprised if Fox brings him back. Because he's still because but, Urban Meyer's still a legend in Ohio. But how do you how do you handle that bringing? So who are you going to let go from the studio to bring Urban Meyer back with all of his baggage? And I think what was his name? Um, oh, I can't even think of his name. Paul Feinbaum. When he was on TV, he he said it. He said Urban Meyer is not a good person. He 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 just flat out said it. He brings too much. All the lies that he told when he claimed he didn't know that assistant coach was abusing the wife. Everything that, but Paul, now, I mean, I'm not a big council culture type person. If I don't like somebody, I don't like them. It just looks bad to have, to bring him back in after everything is oh, really is out there. 
So this is it for Urban, y'all. Y'all, y'all all agree that he should just go right off into no. the sunset and spend his money. I mean, you you may get some co college that's really really desperate, and that I college. wouldn't take it. I wouldn't take it. I mean, hey, you know all these pros are jumping to the to the HBCUs. You know, I don't know if, if somebody would want to get away from them Miami. kids, Urban. Uh uh. But no. somebody might no. be desperate enough to actually hire Urban. But at this point, I I wouldn't. I I wouldn't. You've, I mean, I'll you had this, people crucified for month. less. If if Ryan Day lose to Ohio State again in the horseshoe next year, don't be surprised if he gets a, another shot back with his old school. I'm just saying that's 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 a that's a a, a a punishable by death offense to lose to Michigan twice in a row. I can see someone in the Pac-12 hiring him too, uh, like a, a weaker conference, kind of being like uh, you might have an easier chance over here. Wow. Okay. So again, Tennessee, we want you back. <laughs> be the special teams coach. Be the place <laughs> kicker for all we care. Just get back on the field. Keep the dysfunction going so we can continue to rack up those two division wins as I digress. Speaking of division wins, the NFL, quite as it's kept, is having a hell of a race for the final playoff spot, the seventh seed in both conferences. So I think that would be a perfect time for us to have a season finale hang in there or have a seat. In the AFC. Now, now, now Mike? Yeah, you good. <laughs> All right, here we go. In the AFC, we have seven teams. I'm sorry, we have four teams tied for the final spot at seven and six. I'm going to go through these teams one by one with you all, and you tell me if that team should hang in there or should they go ahead and have a seat and get ready for the offseason. Don't even try to finish it out. We're going to start with you, Mike. Denver, All right. at 7-6, and six, hang in there or have a seat? I'm going to go have a seat. I don't see them beating the Chargers um, or Kansas City. Teddy or Two Gloves, you a gang soul? Or the Bengals, Teddy Two yeah. Gloves. Nah. Brandon, the Cleveland Browns, hang in there or have a seat at 7-6? and six. Uh, Have a seat. Yeah, let's have a seat because I don't see them being Green Bay. And, um, I mean, yeah. with the Bengals being in the playoff race, I don't think – I think Joe Mixon is going to go wild well that game. Shouts out to Joe Mixon. I should have drafted him instead of Lamar Jackson in my league. Maybe I wouldn't get bounced in the first round. Tasha, speaking of Joe Mixon, his Bengals, 7-6. and six. Hang in there or have a seat. Quit smiling, Mike. I'm going to say hang in there. I, I okay. think that they're – you know, they're, they're on the upswing. I do – you know, I, I like Joe Mixon. I like uh, Joe Burrow. I think um, I, I think they got a good chance to do a little something. All right. So you said you like KC and JoJo. Okay. All right. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mike, back to you, Buffalo. Now, this is an interesting, y'all. I want to hear from all three of you on Buffalo at seven and six. They are just as schizophrenic as your your lead character in, in a murder mystery. Mike, hang in there. Have a seat with Buffalo at seven and six. I think as long as that coach is still trying to run that offense, have a seat. I think Whoa, you got to you got you the playoffs. Yeah, you got to have you got to release Josh Allen. It looks like he's kind of tied up with his offense, and he's mm -hmm. like kind of lost. It's like they man, let's make him Denar run. Robinson. They they really trying to make him Denar Robinson two point but that, I don't think that's conducive to winning in the NFL. Brandon Buffalo seven and six, hang in there and have a seat, Mister Patriots fan. Of course, I'm glad you said that because I was going to put that out there. But uh, no, it's going to be kind of steep. After what they showed us, and we only attempted three passes. Come on now. They got out coached and they got outplayed. So Ooh, that's, that a have a seat. that's a have a seat. You know, Wait, um, they, got uh, 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 they got Kansas City. You know, uh, I feel like Cleveland's going to do something eventually. But yeah, Buffalo is not going to make it. They're supposed to be in the division leaders, dominating the AFCs. They haven't did nothing. Tasha, hang in. I have a seat, Buffalo. And I think she said, "Hang in there." What is that? What you said? I think the wind and whisked her on off into the sea. Um, <laughs> to the <laughs> NFC, my people. All right, now in the NFC, Brandon, Mike, Tasha, we have five teams. At six and seven, vying for the seventh playoff spot. Let's go round table. Let's start with the Saints. Uh, Brandon, hang in there, have a seat. The Saints at six and seven. Hang in there. 
So, so with 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 uh, with, with no Jameis Winston, you you still like you is the defense? What you like about the Saints? I mean, they. I mean, look at the schedule. I mean, you got Atlanta. <laughs> Atlanta. They lost their best receiver. You got Russell Gage doing all the work. You got Cordell Patterson doing all the work at running back. So, I mean, I just don't see Atlanta make, making anything happen. And then Carolina are having quarterback issues. They thought they, you know, like I say, won a Super Bowl when they got Cam Newton and they didn't bench him twice already. And then Miami, they're just up and down. You know, I just don't see Miami, you know, um, making anything happen unless their defense come into play. And then Tampa Bay, no, they don't have a chance against Tampa Bay. Okay, all right. Okay, so next up, the, the Falcons. Wait a minute. Wait. Wait a minute. Before you go any further, how far, how much did you hear what I said about Buffalo? None of it. Okay, this is my point with Buffalo. I'm going to tell Buffalo to hang in there simply okay, because, like Brandon, like Brandon was saying about the about the Pats, how they won. Yeah, they won by running. At some point, Mac Jones is going to have to throw that thing. We all know Josh Allen's got a cannon on him. If they release the Kraken on Josh Allen, Buffalo is is – Buffalo's going to overtake. And so I think Buffalo needs to, needs to hang in there. They're going to play again, too. I hope we're back on the air when that happens. All right. Okay. So Atlanta, Michigan Mike, hang in there have a seat with Matt Ryan. <laughs> I started laughing. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm going to say have a seat. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I don't see them being successful at all. They need to release him ASAP. Just go retire. Go ahead. Yeah, they the need to free melted. him. I don't want to say release him. They need to free him because I think he can do work somewhere else. I think he got a little bit left in the tank. Brandon, no, that ice cube has melted. Oh wow, Matty Ice. <laughs> that, right. Oh, Matty Ice. There you go. <laughs> she been on that MJC this morning. All right. Um, we'll let you handle Mike's team, Brandon. Philadelphia, hang in there. I have a seat. Oh, what you mean? They, they going to the playoffs. <laughs> oh, that's what I said too. Mike don't want to hear that. Playoffs by that schedule. Mike, on, I man. told you, Mike. <laughs> man, they can't do nothing right, man. I swear. Mike wants them to tank because so they can get the uh, Aiden Hutchinson. I'm like, look, bro, y'all going to the damn playoffs. I don't know what you're talking about. Playoffs. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. They are, we're sorry, Mike. They going to the playoffs. Tasha, let's go with Minnesota. Hang in there, and have a seat. I want them to have a seat simply because I hate Kirk Cousins. I just, I just want them to have a seat. Is it a Sparty they, thing or a Cousins thing? It's just a Cousins thing, period. I don't like how he's been getting all of this money and has he's crappy. He's, he's, he's not good. They're winning now because of Mr. Dalvin Cook running the ball like a maniac. I just do not like – I just don't like him, and that is a personal pick. But they're, look how they're winning games. Everything is so close. And when it comes time to, like, really do it, I don't think they're going to be able to pull it off. You don't like that? You don't like that? <laughs> I mean, they only want, they only got one true receiver, and that's Justin Jefferson. That dude. You, know, you like don't you think Adam Thielen is done? Game. You think Adam Thielen is done, Brandon? Yeah, yeah I think so. He's kind of going to go off like Adam Humphreys. Oh <laughs> no, no, he was a disaster last year, in Tennessee. Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay, Mike, the Washington Football Team. I will tell Minnesota to hang in there, though. I like Jefferson doing this little end zone dance when he scores. He's exciting <laughs> to watch. <laughs> hang on in there. Um, watching the football team, Mike, hang in there and have a seat. I mean, going off of what we're saying, we're saying the Eagles and the Cowboys are both making it to the playoffs, so that leaves Washington out. So I'm going to say have a seat. Have a seat, uh, Brandon, with the Washington football team, uh, with uh, Chase Young out? Yeah, I mean, they, I mean, they still have some good defense presence, but Chase Young – Brings a whole different presence to that defense, and I think you'll need him when when it comes down to those divisional games. Tasha, with you, Washington hang in there, have a seat. Oh, I don't know because see, I'm not sold on Philly. So those were my, you know, because those were my two go in betweens as far as them getting in. I think I like the upswing on Washington a little more than Philly. Well, I'm sure Mike is happy to hear that, as is Miss Lisa Cerna, the beautiful and lovely Miss Cerna. Thank you for checking in. She says, go Eagles. Um, I want them to make the playoffs so Dallas can crush them on the national stage. Yes, yes, and yes. All right, so when we come back in January, we're going to have the answers to these questions on who hung in there and who had a seat. Mike, I'm sorry. No Aiden Hutchinson. 
but you get to watch them one more time in Wild Card Weekend before one of those other teams knock them out. Um, now time for our bowl picks. Now, there's too many bowl games for us to pick them all, so we're going yes. to um, <laughs> 44. <laughs> <laughs> he said, <I'm, laughs> "44. Mm-hmm. This is how we did last week, y'all. Y'all, y'all see who that in, in, in right? Is that me in first place? That is me. Oh, they already had some games. Yeah, MTS, you played yesterday. Yeah. Oh, that tells you right there. <laughs> and they won. <laughs> and won. So and they don't even know who I picked. Shouts out to them. But um, but Mike is uh." It's hot on the trail. We're gonna see how this how this plays out. Now, let's start with the Rose Bowl this week. We're gonna just get to the big boy games. The Rose Bowl. We have Ohio State and Utah. Mike, who you got? I got Ohio. Yeah, we can just kind of make that one quick. Brandon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ohio. I just don't see Utah pulling it off. Tasha, I just want to hear yeah. you say it. The FIs, and now that now that Urban Liar doesn't have a job, he can actually coach them again. He's going like to be up there doing. grinding on some intern. <laughs> but the um the thing is, Baby, when they take that field out there in Pasadena, all they're going to see is maize and blue on the other side of that field. They're going to they gonna kill Utah. Utah don't even show up. Like, that, that, like we embarrassed them to the point to where uh, – did you see um, Desmond Howard clowning C.J. Stroud at the Heisman and all of the blowback he got? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they are going to kill Utah. Like they just want to get their hands on somebody. So Utah, y'all got problems. Okay, Oklahoma State versus Notre Dame. Now I am going to actually sit and watch this whole game. Tasha, who you got? The Cowboys. Are well, you finally going to pick the Cowboys in the segment? I picked them before, but you know what I tell y'all? I always bet on black. I'm going for the Golden Domers. Golden Domers, it is. Brandon, what say you? Oh, Notre Dame. Fighting Oklahoma Irish. Fighting Irish. I can't. After what I saw against what they did against Baylor, um, I mean, Spencer, that was a half a yard short. Spencer Sanders is off and on. You know, you don't know he when really he's going to show up. Um, he really is. They don't he really, really have is. any big name receivers out there. Their defense is the only thing that I think will hold them up. But I mean, they didn't do too well against Baylor. That quarterback scares me. I'm going to go with Notre Dame as well. Mike, are you going to pick yep. the Catholics? Notre Dame. <laughs> He knew he was raised Catholic. <laughs> Shouts out to our mamas who are hey, watching. Man. We love y'all. <laughs> All right, don't hey say something else about Mary. All right, <laughs> um, next now let's get to the ones that ever. Now we talked about these games for weeks. Now it's time to get your official pick: Alabama or Cincy. We'll start at the top with you, Mike. Ah, uh, I hope for an upset, but I don't think it's going to happen. I got Alabama. I got Bama by fifty. What you got, Brandon? <laughs> I got Bama. Um, it's just this is the time where they start heating up, and that um, that hot stove is getting hot. So I'm going with um, Bama. <laughs> right, go Catholics. We're going with Notre Dame. My mom is a Catholic. She raised me Catholic. My grandfather, may he rest in peace, Paul Tate, Catholic. St. Vincent de Paul Church is where we attend. Go Irish. Um, Tasha T. Sizzle, you up next. Roll Tide Roll. You ain't supposed to say that. You can only say go. You know what? Let's keep it moving. We're going to start back with you now. You can redeem yourself. In the big boy matchup, we got to Michigan versus Georgia. Michigan. Okay. That's <laughs> Michigan, Mike, we got? Man, we got Michigan. Come on now. The Brandon, who you got objectively? Because you know I'm taking Michigan. I wish it was Georgia, but now Michigan look way better than Georgia. No, we need somebody to pick Georgia. You know how we curse things. Uh, hey, I, you know, no, Georgia, I mean, look what they did. I mean, they barely beat Clemson. They got humiliated against Nick Saban and company. They did. I mean, to, to, to be honest, of course, we all know I'm picking Michigan because it's Michigan. But, and Paul, I think I wrote this to you or either I tweeted it out or something. Georgia's offense had a little something in that game that we hadn't seen all season. They were actually scoring and moving the ball. So, I mean, of course, of course, I'm picking Michigan, but I mean, I don't think it's going to be an easy game. The only way that Georgia is going to win or even have a chance is if JT Daniels gets put in. I'm I'm honestly yeah. worried about his arm more than their mm-hmm. starter quarterback. 
Yeah, yeah cuz he was uh JT Daniels should have been the one starting. I thought he was the starting quarterback going into it, but then yeah, I saw Ben Mike made that point a couple of weeks ago uh, right after that game. He was like, "Wow, I thought JT Daniels was going to play." They've been kind of kind of messy with but that Kirby situation. Smart, the whole season. Kirby Smart is not good. It's not good with quarterbacks anyway. Every quarterback that should have been starting, they went to other schools and and, and won. And then but you got left with people though, who can even get your offense going. Regardless of whatever quarterback plays, you ain't gonna have much time to throw the ball, buddy, with Odabo yeah. and and AD yeah. on, on the other side. Yeah. I mean, well, that's what I'm saying. JT Daniels is an NFL quarterback in my eyes, from what I've seen, and he has a quick release. So that's what I'm saying. He has, that's the only chance that they have. Yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, Stetson Bennett, and their run game is. I mean, you know, normally they are a good running team, but I they just used don't to be see running any, back university, right? Yeah, I don't see any running backs that are like standing out. If you can't hit Michigan with the explosive play, you're not going to dink and dunk your way to no victory against Michigan. You got to hit them with big plays and score right. quickly. Or because right. that defense is going to make you whole. They're going to make you do something to back you up and to get you off track. So um, so that brings us to the national championship game. Now, we'll be able to – we'll be back the weekend before the actual game. But for now, if since we all pick Alabama and Michigan, who wins the national championship? I'm not asking Mike, and I'm not asking Tasha. I'm asking you, Randy. Let's go, Blow. Well, my choice, honestly, would be Michigan, but I think it's going to be Bama taking it. It's going to be a tough one, y'all. Let's go, Blow. Bama's, Bama's going to be tough. Yeah. yeah. Nice job by you, T-Sizzle, but yeah, Bama's going to be tough. <laughs> On to the NFL picks. All right, Tasha T-Sizzle. We have tonight's game, New England versus the Patriots. Who you got? New England I'm sorry, New England versus Indianapolis. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, yep. Yeah. Right, at least I, one of them would have to lose, right? I really, really think the Colts can pull this off. You've been high on the Colts all year, and they're finally making you look like a genius because that's one of the most dangerous teams in the entire league, in my opinion. Mike, who you got? Uh, I got the Colts, too, actually. Brandon? It's going to be the Patriots, and the reason I say it is, if we can contain Jonathan Taylor, we'll be good. But if Jonathan Taylor have a good That's game, a big if. <laughs> that, thank you. That is a very big if. But and I are going to have to rely on something other than your run game. I mean, the thing about it is, it has um, out as well too with a hamstring injury. Does that change your mind, Brandon? No, we got Ramon J. Stevenson. Oh, you. You know what? He that dude went off. Game. You walk. You baited me into that question so you could poke your boy. <laughs> I mean, come on now. But like I say, just being honest, um, it's the Patriots. I love the Patriots and everything. But if we cannot contain Jonathan Taylor, then we're done. That man runs the ball like teams pass the ball, just at will. Mm -hmm. Seven, eight yards, eight yards to carry an attempt. That's it's crazy. All right, Mike, we're going to your neck of the woods. Washington football team versus Philly turning up on a Tuesday. Who you got? I, I have to agree with y'all. I don't think they're going to stop winning at this point. I got the Eagles on this. Embrace the winning, Mike. Embrace the winning. Y'all found a nice uh, defensive end in the second, third round. Brandon, who you got? Two hanging there have a seat contestants. Which one moves on? You got Washington or Philly in this one? I'm going to go with uh, Philly. You know, my boy Jalen Hurts, you know. Um, I mean, he ain't playing. Oh, you like, was all over the NFL, people. ain't they? Yeah, they are. <laughs> T-Sizzle, yeah. who you got? Watching the football team or the Eagles? The WFT, baby. Oh, you going with old Heineke, huh? Okay. Up in All right. DMV. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, uh, she must like the Washington football team because she picked them last week. No, Did they I, win I, last mean, week? No. I mean, I do they have an last week. I see Michael Parsons having quarterbacks next go like this. <laughs> <laughs> like that deep y'all remember that time oh. when, when Warren Sapp hit who did Warren Sapp hit and it's beyond a deep clear because I think he separated his hip when he hit him oh my god I, I have to figure that out later on but yeah that's how Michael Parsons is going to be hitting people but still Michael, yes Michael <laughs> Parsons Michael Parsons all right uh Cincy versus Denver I need this is the Joe Burrow save my fantasy football season game right here I got the Bengals because I got a root for Joe Burrow to put up 100 points Mike who you got I got Cincinnati Brandon? I'm going with my boy, Joe Mighty Mitson. Oh, you, let me guess. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm sick of I'm sick of Oklahoma today. All right, T says, who you got? <laughs> I'm going with Cincy, too. I don't think Tadaro can get it done. 
I don't but I don't either. know. You know, they they've been they've been fighting hard and playing hard ever since you know uh, DT got his wings. So I don't know. They've that been is playing true. Inspired but football. Teddy two gloves. I just don't know. Cincinnati right. really needs this one after how they blew that game against San Francisco last week. I think they come out hungry. Um, back to you. Now you always bet on black, but black plays blue this week. You got the Pittsburgh Steelers or the Tennessee Titans. <laughs> Betting on black, Coach Omar Epps. We're going to bring some barbecue sauce to Heinz Field and give them some real condiments on Sunday. You know it's all time Titans. It's all, I'm trying to think of an Oklahoma player on our team. I'll think of one. Brandon, who you got? Uh, <laughs> oh, he's laughing. Oh, man. This is this is a, this is is actually a hard Where's one to be honest my niece, with you. Denise, Denise, Denise. I cannot believe she's a, she's a, she is a Steelers fan. You know, my Big favorite. Ben, as long as Big Ben is quarterback. My favorite niece, Denise, Denise. Who you got there, Brandon? I got to go with the Titans because as long as Big Ben is a quarterback, the Steelers ain't going to do nothing. <laughs> Ooh, you heard that, Mike? I got the Titans, too. Now, speaking of the Titans, let me just say this. If the NFL don't do the right thing and make Derrick Henry a, a pro bowler this year, I am going to be very, very upset. Do oh, y'all right. know that Derrick Henry is fourth in the league in rushing and the man had played since Halloween. But what is, yeah. what is the Pro Bowl going to do? So he can go, go – What is it still in Florida? Like So he can go to Florida and stand on the sideline and, with his no, jersey? No, it's the respect the factor. It's the respect factor that the man played a half a season and still finished in the top five in rushing. And you also have people who get put in because somebody else decided not to play in the Pro Bowl. If no, the Pro Bowl has lost its luster. Because you don't play in the Pro Bowl if you're in the Super Bowl because you know it's in that in-between week. So Derek hey, ain't going to be there. Derek hey, Paul, gonna... while you're up here playing, you saying figure out a Oklahoma football player. Y'all actually do have one. Come on with it. Uh, Monty Bledsoe. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, he's on the, hey, the practice squad, but. <laughs> have a day, Oklahoma. Hey, I can't. Hey, Mike, you up next the next time, the next show, for all of the Michigan players in the pros. Oh, we keep you. this thing going. We keep this thing going. <laughs> we'll assign you FSU. Um, now, ladies and gentlemen, this is our season finale. We will be off the next two weeks to enjoy the holidays with our fam lees. So, does anybody? We'll start with you, T Sizzle. Do you have an end of the year shout out? To be honest, this is the first time I did not think about it. But no. All right. Well, we'll move right on along, Mr. Brandon. Got a, <laughs> got an end of the year shout out, a New Year's resolution, anything? Uh, I mean, I got a few things. Um, I always come prepared, you know. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to my. Ooh, say. I want to give a shout out to my boy, uh, Miles Smith. Uh, he's graduating um, from Gaylord College of Journalism from OU. Um, he's from Miami. That's my boy, one of my first friends that I met here. So congratulations to him. And then just, you know, um, everybody have a safe um, holidays, you know, going into new year, let's think of some things, how we can progress and grow, um, elevate in life. Um, so that's all I can say. Does that work for hair? Cause I like to progress and grow. <laughs> well, you know hey, what? I, I, I want to take it. <laughs> Uh, I want to say uh, it's a good luck to uh, Mr. P. L. Coulter over here. No, don't do this. Don't, don't in, I want to hear about a couple this. Of, uh, fantasy leagues, and uh, so I hope you win one, but Look, not the money. <laughs> he says this because he got Travis Kelsey and and Tyreek Hill, and they both had like fifty points on Thursday. That's why he wants to shout that out. Hey, you he called him out. So. Your mom's watching. No shouts out for moms. Yeah, shout out to the family. They they always watch. They're big fans. <laughs> Hey, look, I'm put mommy on the phone. The I ain't never coming home no more. Now, <laughs> That's what I've been like. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow my favorite niece, Denise, Denise. Shout out to Deion Sanders for snagging one of the top college prospects in the land. Does anybody have thoughts on that, by the way? Do you think this may be a trend? Florida State is saying that he bribed him with NIL money with, with Barstool, which he has a, an affiliation with. Do you believe well, that? Do you think he got him on his own recognizance? We could do a whole we could do a whole show just on this because there's different angles about it. Um, no, I don't think that he he paid. I think he said we can develop you and you could be the star of this whole town. Um, but two, I don't I mean they got a top transfer last year and you didn't hear anything about that. Um, yeah, because he didn't so. he didn't shun a major college football team to do it either. But I right. don't think it's 
remember I told you, I said, I think they're going for Dion because when Dion leaves, what's going to happen to Jackson State? What's going to happen to all these HBCUs and all these big time people that they hire leave? I want you to go to the school because you want to go to the, when it comes to HBCUs, we all know why people go to PWIs. When you're going to an HBCU, I want you to love that HBCU because if D- if Dion, if somebody comes through with a big time job for Dion, I think Dion's going to leave. What is yeah, going to happen? As he, as he should. But but no. But the thing is, you've built this, and then you cannot bring anyone in the caliber of Dion Sanders to replace him. So okay, guess yeah. what? They're I'm not going to it- come anymore. I, I get what you're saying, but I want to paint the, the picture like this. Going to play for Dion is like dating a Kardashian. You know it ain't forever, so just enjoy the spotlight while you got it. <laughs> but also, to that, did you guys see where that idiot Florida State fan burned his signed autograph, uh, his, his autograph Dion Sanders jersey when he was at FSU? The yeah, idiot brain was so and everything. Mad. Like how st- people, it's the dumbass people in this yeah. world. It's and not look, that and meanwhile, Dion is somewhere eating some pancakes, enjoying his breakfast, enjoying in his that, day. In that, wi- in that wheelchair this. on the sideline. They play today at 12 Eastern in the celebration. Oh, ABC. Against, up. against South Carolina State today. Yeah, he even got them ball. on Primetime Network. You don't even need cable for that. Run it back, Prime. Frame on your YouTube back. TV. Get ESPN back for all of the people that signed up for your service. That was BS. It's trending all over Twitter. I don't know who has YouTube TV and who don't. Come to Sling. We got you. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, we want to wish you all a happy new year, a Merry Christmas. We will see y'all um, new and improved back in January. We out. In my mind. Hit that note, Brandon. He's like, no, I ain't hit no note.